Hello, everyone. I'm Raj Kumar, President and Editor-in-Chief of DevX, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the UN's World Data Forum. Welcome to this event. It's a three-day event that's going to bring inspirational and informative sessions to you and really highlight and frame the need for data. As we get out of this pandemic, we recover and we try to achieve the SDGs by 2030. This would have been a very different year had it not been for the pandemic. This would have been the start of the decade of action a time when we look at the progress made in the first five years of the SDGs, and we look to how to accelerate that progress in the next 10. Instead, we've been pushed back, back on our feet, as we look at the damage this pandemic has done across so many indicators around the world. And it has highlighted for all of us the lack of data and the importance of data. Even average citizens around the world now tune into the news and realize how important data is. They become consumers of data in new ways due to the pandemic. And really, they become savvy consumers of what data is real and credible and how to look at what's underneath it all. I think for those of us in the data community and in the broader global development community, it has really laid bare the gaps that still exist, the lack of data, particularly the lack of disaggregated data for vulnerable groups. And today's session and this three-day event is really meant to show us what those gaps are, but also to inspire and inform us about how we can close them. So I'm really honored to be a part of it. You're going to be hearing just today, in fact, from the Director General of the WHO, from the UN Special Envoy for Youth, and from many other leaders, including the CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But we're going to begin now with the Deputy Secretary General of the UN, Amina Mohammed. Well, I'm so pleased to have the Deputy Secretary General of the UN, Amina Mohammed, joining today's UN World Data Forum to kick off our discussions and help us see the big picture and a high level view of where data fits in to the largest goals that we're all working against, particularly thinking about the sustainable development goals, something the Deputy Secretary General played such a key role in architecting and bringing, bringing to life in the world today. Here we are, it's 2020, Deputy Secretary General. This was meant to be the beginning of a decade of action. Um, the pandemic has set us back on so many fronts. But as you assess it, five years in, we are still maybe 50 indicators lack data when you think of the SDGs. There's still so many people in the world uncounted. Um, national statistical systems still weak in so many parts of the world. How do you assess where we stand today when it comes to the data we need to achieve the SDGs? Thank you very much, uh, Raj, and it's a real pleasure to be at this forum. I mean, it took us four years uh, to get to a place where, in fact, we informed uh, the sustainable development agenda, the 17 goals and the 169 uh, targets and, and many more indicators uh, with data, data that came from the field. So we have moved uh, since then. Um, however, as you know, we also know that data is the lifeblood of planning and investments. And we had our first um, SDG moment that would be one we'd have in the decade of action every year, which tried to assess where we were, uh, what the gaps were, and where we were going to be. And for the first time, the UN system came together to say, well, you know, what are we going to do with these gray pieces? Because there were gray swaths across the data that we couldn't find that we couldn't find the targets uh, for uh, the data for the targets that we were trying to measure. Um, so we have come some way. I mean, you talked about 50 that we don't have. I think it's 50 that we have. Um, and we have a lot more than we don't. And because, because of that, um, it's really difficult for us to, to, to measure who's been left behind. Um, and, and investing in data has, quite frankly, been a really tough ask um, of, uh, of our partners. What is the good side of COVID, if there ever can be, um, is the opportunity that we're taking that people actually need to know um, where everyone is, because if they don't, then uh, suppressing the virus itself becomes a problem. Um, and, and therefore, the, uh, whatever the stimulus packages do to respond to that becomes an even a greater challenge. So data right now, it's its moment. It is absolutely key for any spending that is going to go on. Uh, we need it to measure where we need to be. We need to understand where the gaps are. Um, and uh, the investments that need to be made, now's the time that we can take the opportunity from the stimulus packages to push for it. Uh, without data, certainly we will not know uh, when or how uh, to, to achieve the SDGs and also how to make um, a legitimate um, and I would say 
uh, with integrity and investment call uh, for uh, the SDGs. We have all become much more attuned to the importance of data as we have looked at this pandemic and its effect on our own communities. And you now see data being presented in mass media in ways we never would have expected. Publics, I think, are understanding more and more the importance of data and even the, the differences between quality data and data we can't be sure of. What do you think the effect of this is going to be due to the pandemic on the case that leaders like yourself have to make for national statistical offices and for greater investment in data systems? Well, I mean, now's the time to make the case. Uh, the COVID response that we need is not just for the health emergency, it's for the socioeconomic impact and the numbers of people that are going to be left behind in education, um, in, how, in, in actually being seen to by health systems on other issues beyond COVID. Um, in, in the case of the informal sector, and in many cases, the formal sector where jobs and livelihoods are being lost, without having that information, we will not be able to apply many of the cash transfer programs that we perhaps would get in our stimulus packages to address this. So the, the granularity of the data that is needed uh, to identify where everyone is so that we can get the resources to them and that they can survive and come out the other side of COVID um, better than, than, than when they went in. And there are opportunities to that. An example would be education. Um, if we knew where everyone was in education as they were locked out of education, then we would be able to use technology to get to them. But for technology to get to them, we'd need to know where they are. And so really the household surveys that are done are very important. The censuses that are done are important, but much more of an emphasis on the disaggregated data as well um, to make sure that we get there. Uh, the case, I, I think, um, for governments is, uh, is one that is easier to make today because there's a very specific reason, the implications of which they could not afford. Um, but they do need more partners and partners who understand that the implications in developing countries um, will cross borders uh, and will affect the world if they're not taken care of. So much more of a case now for a global response to the needs of both developed and developing countries. We can see trillions being spent in developed countries, and we need a fraction of that in developing countries uh, to come through so that we can, we can respond to um, the challenges we have, but make the investments in data. I would say for every investment, whether it's agriculture, education, health, um, a social protection floor, there needs to be a percentage of that that goes to data, filling the data gaps of that specific expenditure. This is where we can take the opportunity um, of uh, the stimulus packages uh, in response to COVID. Deputy Secretary General, you talked about the importance of disaggregated data. And of course, this pandemic at the beginning, we thought it was going to be the great equalizer. It was going to affect everyone. And what we've come to learn is that's actually exposed the inequalities in our world. And one of the issues with data is we often don't have it when it comes to the most vulnerable or most marginalized communities. How do we make sure that if we're building a new vision around data connected to the SDGs, that it actually reaches the people who are most in need, the most vulnerable, and perhaps those that are typically left behind? Um, how do we make sure data doesn't exacerbate the inequalities that exist in the world today? I think the way that we collect and we produce data, uh, we have to we have to make sure that we're starting from the uh, the grassroots up, from the communities up. And with technology, there's no reason why we cannot um, have the partnerships with civil society uh, that help us to do that in a much more concerted way. So this is not just about um, our governments and statisticians; it's also about others that can help to collect this data and transmit it, verifying it. And you have to start from the communities. Um, this is a little easier now with lockdown uh, because you know you will find uh, people um, at home um, and, and so therefore, it, you know, what better an opportunity? I, I don't think we've had a better opportunity uh, uh, to do that. Um, and I think that once we start doing that, the foundation then we can build on. Um, it will need quite, quite a bit of, um, quite a, quite a bit of uh, attention to the partnerships that we put together. And this is where I also think that, you know, our research institutions, academia, people need to come in to do to make sure the checks and balances are there. as we are evaluating whether, in fact, this all adds up. If we have a population of 180 million, 200 million in my country, and you're telling me that at, at um, the grassroots level, I've got not many people. And as I disaggregate the data, I don't see the children. I don't see the age uh, disaggregation amongst women. Uh, something's not adding up. 
So we, we need to do just more than collect it. It's how we produce it and then how we translate that into our plans um, that then can invest. Um, and then I would say a really robust monitoring and evaluation of whether in fact that happened or not. That needs the people's voice. And so we also have to make sure that the movements and the voices there from civil society, from young people um, who have to be more involved um, in the business of data and statistics than they have been ever before. They're the ones with, with the technology and understand it. It's their future. Um, and I think that here too, we should leverage um, the power of young people and their voices. Thank you for bringing those issues forward and helping to launch this World Data Forum with such an eloquent call to action. Uh, very appreciate, uh, very much appreciate having you here. Yes, I wish everyone well at this UN um, uh, Data Forum. It's, it's an incredible opportunity to start the new year well by making the response now a great recovery tomorrow. Thank you for that. You've gotten us started very well. We really appreciate your presence here today. Thank you, Thank you. Deputy Secretary Thank General you. Amina Mohammed. Thank you. Well, I am now pleased to welcome to the conversation the Director General of the WHO, someone who has been at the center of some of the most important challenges facing the world and its health from the Ebola crisis, and now, of course, to the COVID crisis. That's Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, well known to all of us. We are eager to hear his message to our forum. Thank you, Raj. The need for timely, reliable, and actionable data has never been more important. Data are essential to understand the true scale of COVID-19 and to respond, recover, and recommit to progress towards the sustainable development goals. To make progress, we must be able to measure progress. One of the critical gaps we face is the lack of civil registration and vital statistics data for births, deaths, and cause of death. 12 out of the 17 SDGs rely on this data, and countries need it to make real-time decisions. But even the most advanced health systems are still unable to correctly report deaths and causes of death. Strengthening health information systems in countries, especially CRVS, is a priority for WHO. Earlier this year, we launched the score for health data technical package, which includes all the key elements to optimize health information systems, allocate resources, and enable data use. As part of our transformation, WHO has created a new division of data analytics and delivery for impact to harmonize and streamline our data work. This division acts as our central node for collaborating with partners to address data gaps, support countries, and make a measurable impact in the lives of people we serve. While 2020 has presented many challenges, it also presents exciting new opportunities. The UN data strategy provides a valuable way of aligning data and digital resources across the UN family to meet country needs. The Road to Bern is another strong example of partnership led by the Swiss Confederation with the potential to leverage collaboration among UN colleagues and others such as CERN and ICRC. World Statistics Day is a reminder that we have the technology and the partnerships to harness the power of data to promote health, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable. I thank you. Well, I greatly appreciate hearing those words from Dr. Tedros, and of course the work of he and his colleagues at WHO during this trying time has brought data and the importance of data very much to the forefront for all of us. I'm now pleased to welcome to the conversation Alain Berset, who's the federal counselor for the federal department of Home Affairs in Switzerland. And of course, Switzerland will be the host for the next physical meeting of this World Data Forum and is an advocate for the importance of data to drive government effectiveness, particularly in the most vulnerable countries. Welcome, Alain. Deputy Secretary General, Excellencies. 75 years ago, the Charter of the United Nations set ambitious goals. One of them is to promote social progress 
and better standards of life in larger freedom. The UN has helped to save and improve the lives of countless people across the world. Today, we face new global crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic, which puts this progress at risk. Today's situation shows the extent to which cooperation among states remains important more than ever. In adopting the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, a wise decision was made. A global indicator framework is to be developed by the UN Statistical Commission and adopted by the UN General Assembly. And this process will ensure that the agenda is measurable and thus accountable. The poorest and most vulnerable population groups have to be made visible in statistics too. And the current pandemic shows us that we need more data on vulnerable groups. Only those who are counted count in political decisions. The latest Human Development Report states that the world's education, health and living standards are about to decline, and this for the first time since 1990. And that decline is expected across the majority of countries, rich and poor. Developing countries will suffer most, along with people who were already vulnerable before the pandemic. Data is not an end in itself. It provides the necessary information for relevant issues. Reliable, independent and comparable statistics are key to enable sound political decision-making and the free formation of opinions. There has never been more data available than today. However, it is only useful if we are able to use it to close known data gaps. For example, we still have a gender uh, data gap. Important data sets about women are missing or incomplete. If these gaps remain, we might overlook what consequences a decision may have for vulnerable parts of the population. We need to close those gaps. We need the resources to build up and maintain a globally harmonized statistical system. The UN World Data Forum is an important platform to bring together data users and data producers. This is the first time that the forum is being held virtually. With this year's forum, we want to shed light on one particular question. What is the global data community's response to COVID-19? I am confident that the discussions and the work you do over the next three days will lead to answers. I invite you to play an active part. And I look forward to welcoming you all to Bern in person for the next year's UN World Data Forum starting on October 3rd, 2021. I hope your discussions are fruitful. Let's meet next year in Switzerland. Well, I want to thank Alain Berset for highlighting the need for more and better data when it comes to vulnerable populations. It's a, it's a key theme that we'll be coming back to in the course of this forum. And I now want to bring to the conversation Mark Sussman, who is, of course, the chief executive officer of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, not only a leading organization across the many issues that the SDGs touch on, but an advocate for the importance of data and evidence right from the start of that foundation and its birth. It has had evidence and data in its DNA and has really been a proponent of this across the global development community. Uh, they are also a key source of data, uh, funders for many of the data sources we all rely on, uh, and, a, and a key figure in the importance for uh, reducing worldwide inequality, particularly when it comes to women and girls and the data needed to make that happen. So welcome to this forum, Mark. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be joining you today, though I wish we could gather in person. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted every aspect of our lives. It isn't just an unprecedented global health crisis. It is having a profound effect on society, 
magnifying existing inequities like systemic racism, poverty, and sexism. While the virus may spread indiscriminately, women are suffering disproportionately from its multiple effects. The pandemic is creating new barriers for women to participate in economies, decreasing their access to health services, increasing their risk of violence, and the list goes on. As health systems are strained, an estimated 49 million more women will go without contraceptives in low and middle income countries, leading to 15 million additional unplanned pregnancies over the course of a year. As economies constrict, women are nearly twice as likely as men to lose their job. And while their paid work evaporates, women's unpaid work, caring for children and family members, is rising dramatically. Underlying all this is a fundamental challenge. While these numbers provide a glimpse into what we do know, there's a lot we still don't know about the pandemic's impact on women and girls because we just don't have complete data. According to the Global Health 5050 data tracker, just 121 out of 172 countries are reporting sex disaggregated data on COVID-19 cases and deaths, and only eight countries are reporting sex disaggregated testing data. Without data that can tell us more clearly about vulnerability and risk, we don't have a full understanding of how COVID-19 is harming women differently from men and vice versa. Nor can we see how it is impacting low-income women and girls, essential workers, and women of color. That means we cannot accurately count and consider them in policymaking. Without better data, countries will continue making decisions that miss the needs of an entire population, and progress against COVID-19 will stall. The world cannot afford that, especially as we strive to build back. If we discount half the population, we stand to miss out on creating $5 trillion in additional GDP over the next 10 years alone. So how can we ensure continued progress? Let me propose four areas for action. First, we must increase the collection and reporting of sex disaggregated data on the impacts of COVID-19. Second, we must prioritize and fund more gender intentional measurement in areas that are not regularly covered by data. These include understanding the secondary health, social and economic effects of the pandemic on women, such as unpaid care work and gender-based violence. Before the pandemic, much work was underway to close gaps in gender data and the financing needed to produce them. But today's budget cuts mean nine in 10 national statistics offices in low and middle income countries struggle to meet international reporting requirements. Even in a fiscally constrained time, these cuts are short-sighted. Investing in deeper data on women's realities is a smart, long-term investment to enable effective decision-making. Further, countries can harness smart tools that are already available for this work. For example, the Emerge Initiative at the University of California, San Diego, has evidence-based measures on COVID-19 and gender that researchers can use. UN Women and the World Health Organization likewise have provided guidance here. Third, we must embrace non-traditional approaches for collection and analysis, especially as traditional field approaches aren't safe right now. Our partner, Data2X's research has demonstrated that thoughtfully designed mobile phone and online surveys can help close key gender data gaps and offer insight into aspects of women and girls' lives that otherwise are being missed. Similarly, the appropriate use of telecommunications, social media, or geospatial data can contribute to gendered analyses on disease spread, mobility, work, and other effects. Fourth, policymakers must analyze and use this data to better understand and address how the impacts of COVID-19 are being felt differently across different populations. Even the best data is no use if it is left to gather dust on the shelf. 
Good data is the bedrock of effective policymaking. That's been the approach of the Gates Foundation since its inception. We see in our own work that when we don't disaggregate data or prioritize measurement of areas important to women and girls, we miss key insights and therefore make less informed decisions towards closing equality gaps in our world. With better data, we have the opportunity to learn how this global pandemic is impacting everyone in our world and get us back on track for the Sustainable Development Goals. So we've just heard from Mark Sussman about the importance of sex disaggregated data and the role it plays in better policymaking and better development projects and initiatives so we can get back on track to the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly when it comes to women and girls for whom there's still a huge gap when it comes to having the data and evidence that we need. And I now wanna to turn to an important advocate for youth, another group that is often overlooked in the data. And that's Jayathma Wikramanyake, who is the UN Secretary General's envoy for youth. Welcome to the conversation, Jayathma. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's a great honor to address the virtual 2020 UN World Data Forum. We are at a critical juncture today as we look to scale up our concerted efforts to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals as a part of the Decade of Action. We have been collectively challenged yet again. The COVID-19 pandemic has overturned our lives and our aspirations as individuals and as nations, and its impacts will be felt for years to come. It's particularly true for the 1.8 billion young people around the world for whom the future looks as uncertain as ever. However, these same young people facing challenges with are even more evidence and deep today have told us repeatedly that they are here, ready, optimistic and committed to build back better as part of our recovery efforts. They have also told us that we must not allow the world to go back to normal because that normal wasn't providing for every young person everywhere the opportunity to fulfill their potential. So, in order to chart a new way forward, to identify the best and new approaches, to understand the gaps and to bring those furthest left behind to the forefront of our efforts towards recovery, we need data. This is also critical to show our progress and achievements towards the commitments we have made. What we need is not just any kind of data, but timely, relevant and disaggregated data in order to achieve the ambitious targets of the Sustainable Development Goals. If we are to understand the status of the world today, we need disaggregated data by sex, by age, by race, by ethnicity, income, migratory status, disability and geographic location. Only then we will be able to identify those who are most in need, those who are the hardest hit and those who need additional investments, voice and representation. As the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, my team and I, together with partners from the UN, private sector, youth organizations and others, are working to develop an SDGs dashboard, which will provide access to youth-specific data and which will allow us to identify data gaps and needs when it comes to youth. We can do more to maximize the use of new data sources and technology and to create more meaningful connections between custodians of data and data users. Young people are an active part of the community of data users, leaders and innovators. And I call on all of us today to work with them in developing robust and timely data that will help us achieve the sustainable development goals. Through more meaningful engagement of young people, we can unlock data, ensure inclusion, and protect data privacy. I look forward to hearing from everyone in this forum how we can work together to accelerate progress towards achieving the SDGs in the decade of action through the power of data. Thank you. And I just want to mention to all of you that as we engage in these discussions, we're really looking to not only inform you, but inspire you. This is an opportunity for us to understand where data sits in the broader context of the SDGs 
and in the Build Back Better movement as we get out of this pandemic and as we try to address many of the underlying challenges facing the world. You're going to have access to that inspirational and informative content through live stream sessions over the next three days. And I recommend you viewing as many of them and as many of the pre-recorded sessions as you can that were released last week as well. We need your participation as part of this global data community. And this is a community that's gonna play an important role in the response to COVID-19 and in the actions we need to accelerate the SDGs. We hope very much that you can join us in this effort and play an active role in these three days. And it's a real pleasure and honor for me to be asked to, to help to host this event. Thank you so much for watching and being here.